Um, hello everyone and welcome to the EUC Scotland introduction to GHG emissions reporting training session. Um, this is a virtual training opportunity um, for sustainability and estates professionals who are looking to improve the quality of their public bodies climate change duties reporting. This discussion will last a maximum of one hour and 30 minutes, uh, although I think it will be a little shorter um, because you don't have microphones so the discussion section at the end will be uh, a little trickier. Um, my name is Jill Burnett. I am the Carbon and Estates Project Officer here at EAUC Scotland. Please feel free to contact me with any questions following the event. Um, we will start with me taking us through some information about reporting methodology and data collection and then open out to questions and continue with wider discussion. So please ensure your microphone is working <laughs> so you're able to contribute. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping to go over now. Um, I'm hoping everyone can hear me well. I think that's okay now. Um, if you're having any technical issues at all, uh, just message me in the chat box, um, or you can email my colleague Scott uh, on scotland at euc.org.uk and he will help you out. Um, I think we've, yeah, we've covered all these things. Um, if you haven't already done so, please make sure your name is accurate. We've got that, great. Um, and just to let you know, the webinar is being recorded. Um, so I can share with people who weren't able to attend this session. Um, once the webinar is finished, you will be sent a short survey for us to gain your feedback. Please take a few minutes to complete this survey as the results will help us to improve virt future virtual trainings. Um, we suggest you use gallery view within Zoom, um, which allows you to see everyone's webcams at the same size. You can find the button for that in the top right of your screen. So let's get started. Um, I was going to ask everyone to introduce themselves and tell us a little about their role. Um, but uh, yeah, well, I can introduce you. So uh, we've got uh, Beverly um, from Dumfries and Galloway College um, and John and Martin from Inverness College today. Welcome everybody. Um, so today, here's our agenda. Um, we're going to look at methodology, specifically the Greenhouse Gas Protocol. Um, we'll look at what the sector is currently reporting um, and the new SSN guidance. Then we'll look at how to collect data for each of the recommended sources of emissions. Fuel combustion in boilers and generators, grid electricity, fleet vehicles and plant, F gases, waste disposal, water supply and treatment, business travel, staff and student commuting. Um, then we'll briefly look at monitoring and targets um, and the peer review sessions that we offer. Um, and finally, we're going to have questions and discussion and we'll just try to do that with the chat feature. Um, so we're now in the fourth year of mandatory public bodies climate change duties reporting and the Scottish Government's platform, PropEx, is open for 2018-19 submissions. Most of the institutions report for the academic year, uh, but calendar year or financial year are also options. Um, there's guidance available on the SSN website for um, login and password problems and um, setting up a new user account, which I believe some of you will need, um, and completing the online submission. So the, the links are all in this presentation, which I'll circulate um, after the session. Uh, key changes for this year are that SSN has set a minimum reporting boundary, which we'll move on to in a moment. Um, and also that key data has been pre-populated into the system, so it should be a lot quicker for you to complete your submission this year. Um, uh, please remember to save each entry, as the system unfortunately uh, logs out automatically after 10 minutes of inactivity. Um, and also remember that the submission deadline this year is the 30th of November. Um, today we are going to look specifically at section three, um, where you enter activity data and the tool calculates the GHG emissions associated with each activity. The SSN reporting guidance for section three is based on the Greenhouse Gas Protocol corporate reporting standard, which is widely considered to be international best practice. It is published by the World Business Council for Sustainable Development and the World Resources Institute and provides reporting requirements and guidance for companies and organizations such as universities and colleges. It covers the seven main greenhouse gases in the Kyoto Protocol, uh, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, hydrofluorocarbons, parafluorocarbons, uh, sulfur hexafluoride and nitrogen trifluoride. 
As illustrated in the diagram, it breaks emissions down into three separate scopes. Scope one are direct GHG emissions, um, which the institution has control over, such as fuel combustion in owned boilers and vehicles. Scope two are indirect GHG emissions uh, from the generation of purchased electricity, steam, heating, and cooling consumed by the institution. Scope three are indirect GHG emissions, which are a consequence of the activities of the institution, but which they do not directly control, such as sending your waste to landfill, business travel, and commuting. It's best practice to report all scope one and two emissions and relevant scope three emissions where possible. SSN also requests that emissions are allocated to the correct scope in your PROCEX submission, as this helps them with monitoring and analysis. Um, in terms of the recommended reporting boundary, um, previously institutions set their own operational reporting boundaries. Um, but the SSN guidance for 2018-19 states that all institutions should report building energy, fleet, waste, water and business travel as a minimum. And for the FHE sector to lead within public bodies climate change duties reporting, EAUC Scotland recommends that F gases and commuting are also included. This graph shows a breakdown of reporting across the sector in 2017-18. As you can see, there is a significant variation in what institutions are currently reporting and only 7% uh, are reporting a complete set of recommended um, sources of emissions. Every institution reported the emissions associated with energy, um, but 9% emitted water and waste, 23% emitted fleet, 37% emitted business travel, and 91% emitted commuting and F-gases. Uh, finally, before we move on to data collection, I would like to show you a breakdown of emissions from an example institution. Um, this is Glasgow Caledonia University's footprint from 2017-18. Apologies, I don't have a college example, but at present, none of our colleges are reporting um, commuting emissions. And I really wanted to illustrate to you what a significant source they are for our sector. Um, as you can see from the pie chart, scope one and two emissions, so that's um, building energy consumption, refrigerant gases and fleet vehicles, account for roughly a quarter of total emissions, with the rest coming from scope three. And within scope three, the most significant source is commuting, which accounts for 39% of total emissions at Glasgow Cali. Um, I know some of you are concerned about the accuracy of commuting data in comparison to other sources of emissions, but the GHG protocol accepts that data accuracy may be lower and states that it is more important to understand the relative magnitude and possible changes to scope 3 emissions like commuting. Now, um, we're going to look at specific data collection methodologies for the recommended sources of emissions. Um, first, let's look at building energy consumption. I think everyone is already reporting this, um, so I will just briefly run through it, and if anyone has any questions, we can return to this at the end of the session. The emissions from fuel com consumption, it, sorry, combustion in uh, owned boilers and generators are scope one. This includes natural gas, heating oil, and biomass. Data is easily available from fuel bills and can be collected in liters, kilowatt hours, tons, or cubic meters. Um, please note that the biogenic CO2 emissions from biomass are considered to be out of scope and should therefore be reported separately. Um, the total weight volume of biomass should still be entered in Section 3 and PROCEX will calculate the associated CH4 and N2O emissions in their CO2 equivalents. Um, I think you're already doing this at Inverness. I'll have a quick look at your footprint before we signed on, so that's, that's great. Um, so next, moving on to... Uh, electricity from the grid. Um, grid electricity generation is classed as a scope 2 emission and again consumption data is easily available from your supplier. Um, it's also important to remember to report transmission and distribution losses from grid electricity which are classed as a scope 3 emission and um, you use the same consumption figures in kilowatt hours but these emissions are listed as a separate entry in PROCEX. 
Um, please also note that electricity sourced from a green tariff directly from the grid cannot be reported as zero emissions due to double counting. Uh, moving on to F gases, and um, these are a scope one emission. They are fugitive emissions from refrigeration, air conditioning, fire protection, heat pumps and labs. These gases have global warming potentials thousands of times higher than CO2. So even a small leak is important to record. Um, a full list of the F gases covered by the Kyoto Protocol is available from the UK government's GHG report and conversion factors, which again, I will circulate with this presentation following the session. Um, you need to find out the type of gas used by your equipment and the amount topped up during the reporting period. Um, this should be available from the annual maintenance report um, and I believe it is a, a legal requirement for these top-ups to be recorded. Um, the type of gas that your system uses um, will also generally be labelled on the equipment. Um, some of the common ones are HFC 404A and HFC 134A, which are used in refrigeration systems, and HFC 410A, which is used in air conditioning and heat pump systems. Um, moving on to fleet vehicles. These are scope one emissions from the combustion of diesel, petrol, and marine oil. Um, the best quality data is litres of each type of fuel used, but if that is not available, you can collect distance travelled by each mode of transport. Um, data should be available from fuel receipts or service records. Um, for this section, please note that the emissions associated with electric vehicles charged on site will already be included in total electricity consumption. Ideally, this would be reported separately, but if that is not possible, a note can be added in uh, ProcX. Um, next, we'll look at waste. Um, these are generally um, scope free emissions from landfill, incineration, anaerobic digestion, recycling and composting. You'll need to know the weight of, of each material sent to each destination. And this data is available from your waste contractor. I know that some institutions have on-site composting or anaerobic digestion. Please note that these would be classed as a scope one emission. Um, next, for water, um, there are two sources of scope three emissions. It's split into supply and treatment. Um, they're listed as two separate categories of projects, so please make sure to enter both. You'll need to know the volume of water supplied in cubic metres, um, and this data should be available from your supplier. If volume of treated water is not available, you can estimate uh, the volume of treated water to be 95% of the supply volume. Moving on to business travel. Um, this is a significant source of scope free emissions for the FHE sector. Um, and roughly two thirds of institutions are reporting it at present. Um, it should include all staff and student travel by air, rail, road and sea for things like field trips, conferences and meetings um, that's occurred during the reporting period. Um, it's important to note that any travel in vehicles owned by the institution should be excluded as these are classed as a scope one mission. In terms of data, the highest quality that you can have is the quantity or cost of each type of fuel consumed during travel, um, which you would obtain from fuel receipts. Uh, however, where this data is not available, um, you would collect distance travelled by each mode of transport. Um, this type of data is usually available from your travel booking system or expenses. Um, for air travel, um, data should ideally be broken down by distance, so uh, domestic flight short hauls, which are defined as within Europe, and long hauls defined as outside Europe. Um, this is because more fuel is used um, during takeoff and landing, so shorter flights emit more CO2 per passenger kilometre. Um, if possible, flight data should also be broken down by class of travel. Um, this is because um, the emissions associated with a first class flight, so it's for example, a first class long haul flight, are four times greater than the economy option. Um, and uh, lastly, load data and uh, travel data should be broken down by vehicle type and fuel type. And um, lastly, we're going to look at commuting. 
Only 9% of institutions are currently reporting these emissions. And looking back at the um, Glasgow Caledonia University footprint, we can see they account for 39% of total emissions. Um, commuting is a scope three emission, arising from staff and student travel between home and the institution. Um, you'll need to know the total distance travelled by each mode of transport during the reporting period. And the best source of data is an annual travel survey. Um, you'll need to ask for distance travelled per day um, one way, and then you can double it in your calculations. Um, the, the number of days per week that staff and students use um, a transport type, and um, the number of commuting days per week, and the number of days worked per year. Um, survey data can be extrapolated from a representative sample. And if an annual survey is not possible, previous survey data can be used with 2018-19 staff and student numbers. Um, I've just been speaking to a contact who does a survey once every three years, um, and it, you know then extrapolates with the, the annual uh, student figures. Um, you can in incentivize survey response rates with prizes, or you can link completion um, of the survey to permit applications like they have successfully done at Fourth Valley College. Um, okay, so that covers all of our data collection requirements. And um, now if you do choose to expand the boundary of your reporting, any changes should be retrospectively applied to the baseline year. Um, for public bodies that's 2015-16. Um, and this is to enable meaningful monitoring of reductions against targets. Um, if this is not possible, uh, just make a note in uh, PROCX. Um, and if you have not yet set any reduction targets, SSN strongly recommends um, establishing a corporate target that applies across the organisation, um, either as a percentage or absolute reduction or a final endpoint by a fixed date they also suggest that targets should align with national policy where possible. Um, I would also like to encourage you to fill out the performance metrics in section one um, on number of full-time equivalent students and total floor area at the institution. These metrics will allow you to monitor relative progress, progress over time, um, even if you have a significant change um, in your operations or state. Um, and also they facilitate meaningful comparison between similar institutions um, and help us to establish uh, best practice benchmarks. Um, okay, so once you <laughs> had the opportunity um, to digest all this information and have a better idea of what data is available to you at your institution, I would highly recommend attending a peer review session um, at our smaller institutions group. Dates are still to be confirmed for this year but it will likely be towards the end of October. Um, if you would like to be added to the small institution's mailing list, uh, please send me a message and I'll get you added. Um, it's a peer-to-peer -peer review, so a critical friend assessment um, and an opportunity to share knowledge. We've run these sessions for the last two years and members find them really beneficial um, and they're a good addition to the validation um, section on your public body's climate change use submission.